This is News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM KFYO, and we want to get right to the phones with the Car Pro Jerry Reynolds. Jerry, how are you doing today? I'm good, Matt. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. So, uh, what were you? What are you running around in today? <laughs> well, I got to go unplug it in just a second. I, <laughs> I have a very unusual BMW. <clears throat> it is the 740e. Seven series is, of course, the largest of all the BMW sedans. This one is a hybrid with a. In fact, it's a plug-in hybrid. Uh, very, very nice car. Uh, and seven series tend to be super nice, but this this one is a little bit strange for me as a hybrid because you you charge the car and then you've got only fourteen miles of range on the batteries, and then it converts over to just a regular four cylinder gas engine. So it's kind of, I kind of can't wrap my head around the fact that it'll only go 14 miles, and, and I mean, that's under perfect conditions. So literally Monday, uh, when I got the car, I drove halfway home, and the battery was gone, and, you know, I drove it the next two days just on the gas engine, and then I plugged it in last night, so I'll, I'll check the batteries again this morning. But uh, as a hybrid it's not a lot of use, but it, it it's still a car that's hard not to like just because it's so comfortable and because it drives and rides so well, so quiet inside with a beautiful interior. And it's it's gorgeous on the outside. I just don't get it as a hybrid. Yeah, so uh, as far as the 14 miles concerned, it, from what you're saying, this isn't one of those that you plug it up and then the, the gas uh, turns on or whatever and keeps the battery charged. It's literally just flat out 14 miles after that, you know, go to work and back maybe. Um, or if you're you're within 14 miles, you might be able to keep it electric. But other than that, you're Yeah, done. I mean, you'd have to make this thing work. You'd have to have a really short commute every day. And, you know, it, it, it the, the brakes will give you just a little bit of recharge on the battery. But once the battery's depleted, I can't, I can't see... I drove it in stop and go traffic yesterday for over an hour, and the battery, the, the brakes did not recharge the battery enough to even show on the gauge. But you know, ninety nine thousand nine hundred dollars uh, on the window sticker, and I looked then to see, you know, if you went, if you took the step up to the seven fifty uh, I, which is a typical, just a normal gas engine, but it's got four hundred and forty five horses. Uh, it's only six thousand dollars more to go up to the big engine car with with the gas engine with the all gas engine. So you know it, it's not completely out of line price wise, but I, I think probably for most people who buy this car, they're gonna they're gonna just drive it as a normal car. They're not gonna mess with plugging it in every night, especially if they have a um, a drive that's that's gonna deplete the battery before they get to the office like I do. Yeah. So uh, I did notice that your 2019 Ram that you were driving last week it's up, and uh, review and videos up. It 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 is it is a nice you know I hadn't seen a picture of it until now and it is a it's a nice looking Ram, um, and I know that you, you you really liked driving it and uh, I had somebody to ask me something he was saying that Dodges older Dodges uh, or even brand new Dodges from fairly new ones are, have what they call a death wobble, that's what he called it uh, is. And you said that this was a very smooth ride. Do you think that they were able to fix that problem with the the wobbling? Yeah, that problem was fixed some years ago. Oh, okay, uh, and, and it, it was almost a phenomenon because it was a hard thing to figure out what it was. Uh, but we saw the same thing in some of the Ford F two fifties and three fifties. Uh, that would happen. That hit a pothole or something. All of a sudden, the wheels would just start to shake violently, and it. it I never had it happen to me, but it scared some people. I've talked to plenty of listeners it's happened to. The older Jeeps, especially the Wrangler, they had the same issue. Uh, but, you know, I haven't heard that in, in quite a number of years. So whatever it was, I think they got to the bottom of it. Yeah. We do have quite a number of recalls that were announced this week, and we'll have those uh, up online later today. Uh, about five different car companies 
various things, you know, various things wrong that are that are going to need to get fixed. And that reminded me to go look and see where we stood on the Takata airbag recalls. And unfortunately, there's still around 40 million people riding around with defective airbags that, that haven't had them replaced yet because of a lack of parts. Yeah, it's, it's uh, just uh, that they don't have enough airbags to put in there, right? Right, exactly. And Takata, the company that made the majority of the problem ones, uh, finally they finally announced last week that they're selling the company, which is good news because we were afraid they were going to go bankrupt. Yeah. And uh, instead, they're going to sell it. So hopefully the next company can come in and be more efficient and get some of these airbags built and get them into people's hands before somebody else is hurt. So uh, one other thing, the, the owner of Tesla, um, he came out and announced that um, that the Model 3, they're having to cut production way back on that. And they're saying it's problems with automation and he should have hired more people. Um, does that kind of surprise you a little bit? Not really. You know, Tesla's such a strange company. Uh, you know, they don't they don't talk a lot, but when when there's a tragedy like happened recently where somebody was killed in their Tesla driving down the road with the autopilot on, uh, and you know, obviously the guy that was behind the wheel wasn't paying attention and and hit a concrete barrier at at a high rate of speed. And you know, I think that I think that is causing Tesla to sit back and take another look at this autopilot thing and all their production, because I tell you what, the, the NTSB is all over this last wreck. Mm -hmm. There were some questions in in the previous concerns, uh, previous crashes, of driver error and and that sort of thing. This one. Uh, certainly that car should have picked up on the fact that it was headed right to, right toward a concrete barrier, and it didn't. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see where it goes. I don't know. I, I, I've i been thinking as of the last four, five, six months, looking at their cash position, looking at the amount of cash they're burning through. They've been in business 14 years, never made a profit. You know, is this a sustainable business? I don't know the answer yet, but yeah. I, I have concerns. Yeah. All right. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for coming on our program. Uh, just remind everyone that it's carprousa.com. Um, and you said later today you'll have all of the recalls that have been announced. Uh, you said yes, like we'll five have them all up later, later this afternoon, probably right after lunch. And then uh, I'll be on the air with you guys Saturday. Uh, 11 to 1. 11 to 1. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, you have Matt. a good day, Jerry. You too, brother. All right. Thanks. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. All right. We'll be right back after this.